today I'm going to show you how to be able to use one color to be able to do illustration. Um, you can be able to use this um, in portraits, you can use this technique um, in a lot of different uh, surfaces and a lot of different types of projects when it comes to airbrushing. So I got my projector, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I have my uh, Wild Image airbrush and I got some burgundy that I kind of mixed up and we're going we're gonna, to uh, kind of go from there. I'm just gonna kinda get my basic shapes and stuff in. Since I have the projector on. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start filling in some of the color, coloring. So, with this can. And I lower my PSI quite a bit. I want to be able to go in here with some of these details. This little knob gives me the opportunity to lower or higher my PSI built around when I'm painting. I can go from a t-shirt to something like this very quickly. I did thin this paint down quite a bit. I wanted a nice fluid, fluid so I can layer very well. Layering is the key, guys. You want to layer in between the colors. Don't try to do it all in one one stroke. So we're gonna come in there, do all the shading now. Now I have the reference printed as well. It's another thing, always print out your reference. Some people go straight digital on a tablet or something. But I like to have a physical copy. So I'll just print out. have to be aware uh, is 
the eye is looking at these different gradients. So how you light something or how you paint something, depending on where the light is, is very important. I'll do some of these small dagger strokes to represent the veins and the lips. Then I'll also come in and shade in all, some of my highlighted areas. So I know when I come in, if I wanted to come in with some white, and we're gonna do a, a video about highlights. I don't do a lot of highlights because I think that if your work is good enough, the work should stand off with highlights or without highlights, you know. Sometimes people can overdo the highlights. So I'm very cautious on what I do do it and how I do it. guys I'm gonna also show you how I add a little bit of um, texture to the work um, I don't really like doing just a normal airbrush kind of portrait style so I'm just taking um, some of the burgundy thinning it down spray bottle and then I'll take a paintbrush and then like for instance up here I would just kind of do some abstract painting just to kind of fill in some of this black, I mean some of this white area or even a darker color. So you kind of want it to kind of like drip a little bit to kind of give it some cool little textures. It's always something that I like to Kind of do like a little wash and you can come back with your paint with your spray bottle, thin it down a little bit. Same thing up here. And then if you got areas that I'll take a, a rag and just kind of just areas that are kind of building up that I don't want to build up, I'll just kind of wipe them down a little bit. Okay. And I just want a little bit more up here. A lot of times I would even turn the canvas or whatever I'm working on upside down to get up there if we got to. But we're gonna take our time.
Okay. All right, we can maybe darken it up just a little bit. It's all about versatility. I'm going to try to teach from a perspective of being versatile with the materials, being versatile with your work. You don't want to be pigeonholed into one technique or one medium. So it's important to take your time and come up with your own style and your own feel of what the art means to you. I'm just giving you a basic blueprint that you can take and run with. So we're going to let that sit a little bit, and then we'll be back in with the airbrush coming in, touching things up. Actually, beforehand, we'll hit a couple of these things as well. Use a brush as a tool, especially when it comes to hair. The next thing is, we got a toothbrush here that we're going to use. I just kind of put a little bit of paint on it. And I'll put a little water on it. And then pretty much let the bristles do the work for you. I just like to use this technique as well just to make the work a little bit more interesting. Couple of little splatters. that dry and then we'll come back and start working 